at Maui, we have recently implemented our new biodiversity strategy, which solidifies our commitment to ensuring a healthy working environment in the locations in which we operate. A healthy environment is imperative to ensure the optimal growing conditions for salmon. ILU had been in operation since 2005, prior to its closure in late 2020. The site had a lot of diverse features present within the area which warranted the designation of the Wester Ross Marine Protected Area, which goes to show that Maui sites can coexist alongside protected areas quite successfully. The aim of the three-year ILU post-closure monitoring project was to assess the trajectory of benthic recovery upon cessation of farming operations. It is believed to be the first of its kind in Scotland. There are many misconceptions about the environmental impact of the aquaculture industry. However, this project provides solid evidence that seabeds can recover upon cessation of fish farming operations. Lockview was a, an interesting project. Our aim there was to, uh, after we did the full biomass analysis at the end of harvesting, to the, then do subsequent surveys for three years, in fact, to look at how quickly that seabed recovered. Now, the aims were to look at that in multiple different ways, not just seabed sampling with benthos and, and macro invertebrate analysis, but we also integrated an eDNA analysis, which covers a much bigger profile of the biodiversity. We also did habitat mapping and we did photography. We take a piece of the seabed, typically a thousand square centimetres or 15, 20 kilograms of material, comes to the surface. We extract the organic material from that and then we take it to our taxonomic laboratory uh, where we process that for the biology. We also take a very small subsample of that and then that goes to our molecular laboratory for eDNA analysis. The results that we received uh, from the data were initially very, very positive. The first survey, although it was meant to be a year afterwards, actually was only six months after the site was decommissioned. We found that the, the distance to where the biodiversity shifted significantly halved within that six months time. Even though the fish farm industry has been going for 50 years in Scotland, the data on recovery of sites post decommissioning is very limited. And I think this is the first project of its type that shows the depth of information uh, and shows how quickly that environment recovered. So 2015 we started working on some projects with Maui and we were developing environmental DNA techniques uh, with a view to eventually being able to use eDNA as a more efficient method to look at what sort of effects fish farms were having on the benthic ecology in and around the farms. Environmental DNA is very simply just DNA that's left behind by organisms as they go about their business living in the environment. The biggest advantage is that environmental DNA will give you a much broader spectrum of biodiversity uh, and usually it can be uh, less biased compared to other sample collection methods. The Lock U site was a really interesting project. We initially studied it when it was still an operating farm uh, and took our biodiversity measurements at that point. You could see the standard profile of, of, the, uh, of the changes in biodiversity from the cage edge of the farm out to a reference station. We were able to identify where, where those communities shifted from, from an impacted state to an unimpacted state. Uh, and then over the years, we repeated, we repeated that over two more years, uh, expecting to see some, some 
changes to the biodiversity as in some sort of recovery, particularly near the cage edge. But what we were surprised to find is, is when we returned even just the following year, all of the sites had compl nearly completely recovered. critical to salmon farming. In fact, if we didn't have a healthy environment that we wouldn't be able to farm our fish. We're really proud in Scotland that we have what we believe to be some of the strongest, if not the strongest, regulations globally, particularly around environmental protection. Even before a farm is consented and developed, there's a huge amount of work that goes into ensuring that that farm is unlikely to have any long-term impacts on the environment. And then once the farm is consented, there's an ongoing program of monitoring to ensure that the environment's protected and very strict controls that they must operate to. The project has been really important because it's, it's shown us and it's reiterated that the seabed will recover. But it's done more than that, it's told us how quickly that it will recover and it's shown us that it, it recovers very, very rapidly. Uh, and what it means is it reiterates our position and our understanding that our impacts are only temporary and they're, they, they're not long lasting. <laughs>